Okay, so this is going to be kind of a catch-all um, based on questions and stuff like that that I've seen kind of a pattern uh, with. So this will hopefully answer a lot of just miscellaneous little things that uh, people have been asking or having problems with. So first thing is uh, the issue of, let's say I come up here and I grab a wall and I'm going to draw just a, a space here. Okay. So I've got my space, and now let's say this is this is the entirety of my first floor. Now I want to go to my second floor. So I go to my second floor and I say, oh, I don't want my second floor to be a box. I want my second floor to maybe do something like this. And it's going to have little chunks taken out of it that aren't on the first floor. So I want to, you know, maybe I, I want to pull this wall back in here and connect it to this point over here. And then these are getting pulled back, and that's my second floor. Okay, good. So I've got my first floor, and i got my second floor. So first floor, wait, something happened with my first floor. Why did this wall pull back when I did that on the second floor? The reason for that is these are all the same wall. So this wall, the walls you're seeing here are the exact same walls that you're seeing in level two. And the reason for that is if I were to, let's say I go back and I delete these, and I want these back here. If I select these walls, down here in the properties menu of these walls, it's telling me they start at level 1. Okay, perfect. They are on level 1. That's where I want them to be. So where did they go up to? They go up to... It's unconnected, so it's not constrained to anything right now. They go up 20 feet. Now, my level 2 floor plan is not starting at 20 feet. If I go to an elevation here, level 2 is starting at 10 feet. So when I go to my level 2 floor plan, I'm seeing those same walls come all the way up through level 2. If I don't want to see those come up through level 2, I change this from unconnected. I want to say, yeah, they go up to the start of level 2. Perfect. Now they kind of gray themselves out. And the only reason that I can see them is because I have an underlay on. So that if I come in here on level two and say, I want to draw, you know, maybe I want to draw these walls in. And yes, I know that's a little wonky, but I'll make the other one wonky too, just to match. Um, so I'm drawing over the top of these walls, but these are now on level two. So see how these are black and these are gray? Those are showing me that these are the ones on the floor plan that I'm working on. If I turn off my underlay and say, no, I don't want to see my level one, then it goes away. And this is strictly what, what is on level two. So if you, you're ever in doubt about whether something is on level two or not, just turn that off. It's nice to have that underlay so that when you come in and say, okay, but I still want these walls to overlap, it'll snap to points on that... Uh, on that underlay so that you can get stuff to match up. And I can come in here and say this is going to go there and I'm going to move this so that it's in line. And I say okay, that's good to go. And if I go to my 3D view, now I have a second level that's different than my first level. As you can see, these walls, if I select them, defaulted to an unconnected. Now, right now, I don't want them to be 20 feet I'd like to be able to constrain them to some sort of level. Or I could say, okay, I want these to be 10 foot tall, just like my first floors are. But a nice way to do this is go back to an elevation. I got level one, level two, and then I'm gonna click up here under architecture. And then all the way on the right hand side is level. And if I draw in another level here, it goes 10 foot to level two, and then 20 foot is level three, so that gives me 10 feet between level two and level three. If you don't want it named level three, say this is going to be my roof, I can just click on this and say roof. And it will ask, do you want to rename what it's called over here in your project browser? So instead of seeing level three, it'll be say roof. I'll say yes. And now over here it changes this to roof. So if I go to roof, I see my level two underlay here. And if I turn that off, now it goes away. So that's something that a lot of people were having trouble with. They would change, the, they would draw out their first floor plan, they go to their second floor plan, they'd say, oh, I don't want those on level two, and delete them, 
and now you just ruined your first floor plan. So this is a good way to go about doing that. So if I were to select all of these and say unconnected, I want that to connect to my roof level. That way, if for whatever reason you come back and you say, I want, now I decide I want my level two to be 12 foot tall. If I change that, all my level one walls are constrained to that. So they jump up there. And all of my second floor walls jump up as well. I don't have any overlap or anything like that. And I can come back here and say, okay, I want these to be 24. And that'll jump up with it. So it's got that smart feature built, built in where if these change, all your walls change with it. Okay, so that's the first thing that people were having, having problems with. I kind of covered two there in adding, adding a level. Um, so you can also add basement level there too. Um, stairs. Stairs is another thing people have been having problems with. So if I come up here and I just click stair, it, gives, it highlights the run feature right up here. And it tells me, okay, I'm doing a straight run. I could do a spiral, I could do a circular, I could do kind of an L-shaped winder, or this one's a U-shape. So let's say I'm just doing your, your straight run. If I click and start pulling, it gives me this little dialog. And basically what's happening is it's calculating how many risers I need to get to my second floor. So if I come down here in this little properties window, it says desired number of risers, 21. And your riser height's going to be 6 and 219, 256. It's doing that based off of some math. And then your tread depth is 11 inches. That's pretty standard. Um, if you want a little bit longer tread, you could go to 12. But uh, 11 inches is pretty standard there. Um, so this is calculating based off of code rules and stuff like that as to what your riser height needs to be and how many risers you need. So as I click, you can see how right underneath here it says two risers created, 19 remaining, which basically means you've, when I'm dragging here, it's created two of the 21 that it wants to create. So as I start to drag, you can see it says all the way down to zero remaining. So I can't drag anything further out here because that gets me there. So if I click, now it says 1 to 21. So we're all good there. It creates my stringers on either side. It creates my risers, my treads. I'm all good. If this is all you want to do, you hit your little check mark, and there you go. You get your, your full stair that goes all the way up and matches to level 2. So that's one thing you can do. Or you can come in here and click the stair option and maybe you want a landing and you want it to maybe I'm doing it in the corner over here so I'm gonna click and drag and I'm gonna say okay I'm gonna go up maybe let's say I go up 11 risers so I'll go up 11 and then I want to turn the corner and go the rest of the way so then I'll I'm in line here with this so you see the little dotted line creates the snap so I click again and then drag the rest of them out and you see it kind of fills in in between those two and creates me a landing. Now, if I want to change this, I can pull this all the way back here and say, okay, I want my landing there, and it'll pull it back there. So this can create, you know, your landing there. Maybe you don't want this to be quite like this. Maybe this you want to come back. And we're only going to have three there, and I'll come up here and click run again, and then I want the rest of them to go there and I'm going to kind of create a double back stair. You can also click in these little arrows. Maybe you want a wider stair, so you can click and drag that. Or you can click the little dimension here and hit 5 foot, and it'll make it 5 foot. So you get these weird conditions there where you'll end up, you'll have to you know, move stuff around to get, get things exactly lined up where you want them to go. But then I hit my green check mark, and it creates that stair. So I'll hit that, and you can see now it made that stair too. We'll get into, if you're rendering stairs, we'll get into how to change your balusters and all that stuff and make it all look all happy and great and not like a picket fence. Um, but we'll get into that. If you want to do something that's a little, you know, maybe your stairs aren't straight across. Maybe they've got kind of a curve to them or something like that. A good way to do that is this little drop down under stairs is stair by sketch. So it still tells you over here that it wants 21 risers, but now it's up to you. So 
this boundary tool, you click the boundary and you draw the outline of your stairs. So let's say I've got, I'm going to do something that kind of maybe it flares out a little bit like, like that. Okay. So those are my boundaries. So that's my where my like stringer and my railing and stuff like that's going. Now if I click riser, I can start drawing some risers in here. So I can draw that, maybe this stair goes like this, and then maybe this one goes like that. And I can kind of weave these back and forth. Maybe I'm really weird and I don't want all straight, and I want this one to kind of go crazy. This one goes like that, and then... But in the end, I want to have 21 of these little lines. I'm not going to get 21 out of this, but it'll be fine. So I create all this stuff. I hit my check mark, and it says, what the hell are you doing? And it thinks for a minute, thinks for a minute, and then it says, actual number of risers is different from desired number of risers. Basically means you didn't give me 21, so I can't get to the second floor, but I'll do my best. So now it creates a staircase that has all of your treads and everything exactly how you drew them and creates kind of this funky little stair. So if you're doing something unique and weird like that, the little drop down menu, stair by sketch, is a good place to go. Okay, so that's stairs. Hopefully that gives you some idea of what you're, what you're doing there. Um, to show everybody, just if in case I didn't get to you and didn't show you, if you have do a door selected, so I've got pick door, and you see I've only got these, this single flush door, and I have these sizes. Um, if I go to load family, it brings up this, this dialog here, and I can select doors, and it has all these other kinds of doors in here. Um, overhead sectional is your standard kind of garage door. Um, you have sliding doors, you have uh, glass doors, um, you have double glass doors, all sorts of stuff in here that maybe you might want to use. If there's something that you want that's not in here, go ahead and put what's closest in there and then I'll start to show you how you can build your own stuff and make whatever you want to make. So that's a good place for doors. You can do the exact same thing with windows. You click window, load family, and then come over here to windows and there's a whole bunch of different kinds of windows in here. Um, so you can do that. Another thing is components. So you click component, load family, casework is your cabinetry so you've got base cabinets, so it'll show you kind of default vanity cabinets, sink cab, or your kitchen cabinets, things like that. Um, countertops, it's got some defaults in there. Uh, shelving, so this is probably just like your closet shelf, um, shelf and rod. Tall cabinets are your full pantry style. That has your little hole in it for, um, for like an oven and things like that. Um, wall cabinets, this is, these are your uppers that go above your base cabinets for your kitchen, things like that. So that's casework. Uh, if you come down to furniture, furniture has beds and seating. So you've got sofas, you got chairs, and this is the Corbu chair that I was mentioning to everybody. This is kind of the best chair that they have default into Revit. So if you guys had never taken a Revit class and you knew this wasn't the option. This is the default chair that everybody uses because it looks the best. And I'm going to use that in every rendering. And pretty much 95% of all undergraduate Revit renderings, you'll see this chair in there and you can pick them out like a sore thumb because you see the Corbu chair and you go, oh, that's a Revit rendering. Um, so then you got tables, stuff like that. Um, other things of use for right now are plumbing. So under architectural, you have fixtures and you have bathtubs, you have sinks, you have showers, um, you have toilets, all of that stuff that you want to put into your bathrooms is there. Um, and then finally, something that uh, you'll be needing, specialty equipment. And then under that, domestic. So under here is dishwasher, dryer, um, range, uh, let's see, refrigerator, trash compactor, stuff like that. So things to kind of outfit your kitchen with everything that you're going to need. Um, and a nice little tip 
when you know you're going to need a dishwasher, you know at some point you're going to need a dryer, a washer, a refrigerator, um, maybe a double oven, microwave. When you know all that stuff, in Windows, if you hold Control and click, you'll select all of them. In Mac, it might be Command, it may be Control. I'm not sure. Um, I'm used to the Windows side, obviously, so uh, just try each one. But when you select everything, if you hit Open, it'll load all of those things in at one time. And you'll save yourself the headache of clicking Load Family and navigating to those over and over and over again. So once it loads all of those things in, now I've got all that stuff. I come back to my floor plan and I say, okay, I hit component. Now it's defaulting to a dryer. Maybe I don't want a dryer right now. Maybe I want something else. So maybe I want, if I click this little button down here, it brings up every all the components that are loaded so I can scroll through and see everything. And I can also see the different sizes. So refrigerator, I want a left hand 35 by 32. So here's my refrigerator. And right now it looks like a big box and you can't really tell which what's what's what. If you click on this, you see the little line there. That line represents the back of it. So you want that line to be against the wall. And the reason for that line is because they're assuming that you're plugging it in back there and you're you can't push a refrigerator right up against the wall so it ends up reading like that and maybe I want it to go all the way over here in the corner and I can set it there so that's a nice little um, thing there uh, let's see and if I change so as you see there there is no label on that if I change my detail level so I want to know everything that this model has to offer right now if I hit find detail it gives me a label on it so it tells me it's a refrigerator because I set the detail level to better than coarse. Um, so that's loading components. That's your dealing with wall heights, um, creating levels and stairs. Um, other things that you guys may have run into. Um, right now, I think that should be about it. Um, and I told this to a few people, and I'll tell it to you guys. If when you're in doubt, if you're not going to see something other than in a floor plan view, if you're not going to see it in elevation, you're not going to see it in a section, and all you're going to see here is just you know what it's going to look like in plan, don't necessarily you don't have to model everything in 3D. People get trapped into that idea that this is a 3D program, so I should model everything in 3D. Don't worry about that. If it's you, if you're only going to see it in this uh, this view, so maybe your kitchen countertop you're not going to see your base cabinets in elevation or anything, don't put a bunch of base cabinets in. Just use annotate detail line and draw in a 25 inch however long countertop. So your countertop covers your base cabinets so you don't need to see exactly what's going on under there but you know maybe you have a sink and you'll just place the sink right there. When you look at it in 3D your sink will be floating in space but you're never going to see what's underneath there. So if you don't need to see it in 3D, don't model it in 3D. It's just going to bog down your model and make it you know, even more difficult. Same thing with upper cabinets. Come up here, change your li line st style to hidden, and then go ahead and draw in a dashed line of, okay, this is where my, my upper cabinets are going to go, and my sink sits right in between there. So I got upper cabinets flanking my sink. Little things like that help out a decent amount. It'll keep your model size down and make everybody happy. So when in doubt, just go ahead and draft it in there. And if later, you know, we need to model it in 3D for your rendering stuff, by all means, we'll go ahead and show you how to do that. So I think that's about it for this kind of catch-all. Um, if you have anything else that you want to see that maybe, you know, I haven't gotten to in the other tutorials, let me know. And I'll be happy to show you.